So I've spent a month with the Acer Predator Triton 14. This laptop really packs a punch for a 14 inch laptop and has a lot of great features. So we're gonna talk about some things that I like, some things that I don't like too much, and then we'll help you make a purchase decision. Now, first and foremost, one of the things that I really like the most is the micro SD card reader on the front of the laptop. I thought this was such a clever placement because it doesn't really fit in with like the traditional ports because this isn't something you really wanna use to like bring in footage. It's more of a storage expansion tool. So if you are running out of space on your laptop or if you're somebody who travels a lot and you wanna make sure that you have backup storage or backup space so you don't run out of space when you're trying to back up your footage, whether it be photos or video, you can go ahead and add a micro SD card to this laptop, say 512 gigs, one terabyte, and expand the storage on your laptop. Now this is really helpful because the internal storage, there's only one M.2 drive available in the laptop to be upgraded. So a lot of laptops come with two, this laptop comes with one. So you could expand that storage to say upgrade it from the one terabyte it comes with to two terabytes. However, it's a lot more difficult to take off the bottom cover upgrade the storage, swap out the storage. So it's really cool. You can just bring micro SD cards along. I think that's a fantastic option for small storage. You don't have to bring along like big drives with you. Now, the next thing I wanna point out though is that you can't upgrade the RAM. It's soldered to the motherboard and stuck at 16 gigs. To me, this is probably one of the biggest downsides to this laptop. Because if you're a creator and you're doing a lot of heavy lifting inside of Photoshop, inside of After Effects, you are gonna wanna have more RAM. Even inside of Premiere Pro when you're playing back, say like 6K Red or 6K B-RAW footage, Footage, RAM is helpful to create smoother playback. So that is one of the downsides because you won't be able to upgrade the RAM. However, when we get into the performance here in just a minute, you'll see that this laptop still does get great performance. Now, focusing on some things that I really like about this laptop, this is an all aluminum build. To me, one of the best assembled and the best looking laptops currently in the market from Acer. I'm not super stoked about their Acer Predator Helios right now. It just seems kind of like they left it in 2020, 2019 and really haven't upgraded it recently. So just to be totally honest, I'm hopefully gonna review another laptop from them soon. I think it's called the Neo. And hopefully that one will have some updated materials and upgraded build assembly that really make it showcase for a great laptop. This is one of my favorite laptops from Acer from a performance and build quality standpoint. Point. Now going ahead and opening up the laptop, we're greeted by a display that reaches 492 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 100% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 0.81. So it's a bright, color accurate screen. Fantastic for video editing, Photoshop, graphic design work, anything where you need some good color accurate screen to make sure your designs or your video projects look accurate when sharing them with a client. Now we have a 74 watt hour battery, gets us good battery life, but not necessarily great battery life. Because of the software inside of this laptop, I'm not able to turn off the dedicated GPU. So the battery life results are running on the i7-13700H and RTX 4070 activated. So normally I would turn off that dedicated GPU, but since I can't, the settings I'm using are 20% screen brightness, 60 hertz refresh rate on the screen, Windows battery saver mode, and then quiet mode inside of the command center if I'm able to access that. So for this one, good battery life results with those settings in mind, but I've seen laptops with better battery life in the past and I will see it more in the future, I'm sure. Now, one area that I also am going to complain about is this tiny trackpad. This to me, it just doesn't work for creators. When you look at other options in the market right now, like the Razer Blade 14 or the Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus G14 or the X13, they have much larger trackpads. There's a lot more room here to access the trackpad and use it effectively. You could definitely bring it along a mouse with you, but for me as an on-the-go creator, I wanna have a nice large trackpad so I don't rely on needing to use a mouse. Let's say I'm in an airplane or I'm at a small table in a coffee shop and I don't have room for a mouse, having this small trackpad would be kind of work, not necessarily prohibited, but restrictive. And so that I wish they had a larger trackpad. The keyboard is nice. It's quiet. You can see the keys well. It's got a nice backlighting behind it. However, you do have a three, four size shift key. I love full size shift keys. And so for me, that's kind of a killjoy is the shift key. Now I've kind of gone through a little phase where I've 
dissed a lot of things about this laptop. So let's go ahead and check out the performance and show you why I really like this laptop. Now going ahead and jumping into the simulated benchmarks, we're taking a look at single core and multi-core from Geekbench. And you can see that we have a good single core and multi-core scores, especially from the i7-13700H. Cinebench R23 single core and multi-core, same thing. It's having good scores, showing great results for a 2023 laptop, keeping up with a lot of the main competitors. Now going ahead and taking a look at Photoshop, we score a 958. For an i7 processor, an RTX 4070 with 16 gigs of RAM, that's a solid score. However, like I mentioned earlier, because you're not able to upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM, you're gonna be stuck at that 958. Some other laptops on the market, like the Asus Zephyrus G14, you could upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM and you would definitely be in the 1100s to 1200s for that Photoshop benchmark. Now we're seeing good results for After Effects as well. However, like I said, without that RAM upgrade, we're stuck at about an 883, which is good. But again, you're not gonna get any better than that with this laptop. Now for Blender Classroom, we have the RTX 4070 and with the RTX 4070, we're scoring a 1,055. Fantastic, great score, gonna have no issues there. And moving into Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, PTC Creo, and SolidWorks, we're seeing great results. The really big benefit that this laptop has is the RTX 4070 in such a small package. The downside, not upgradable RAM. Just wanna keep that clear as we're moving through these results. Now, the next thing I wanna take a look at quickly is the playback in Premiere Pro. So for 4K playback, we're gonna have zero drop frames, 6K B-RAW, only 120, 6K red footage, 2,567. I expected 6K red footage to match up a little bit more with B-RAW. However, these are the results that we are seeing here. And so if you're a B-RAW user, good to go, 6K red. There's a few drop frames, and by a few, I mean about 3,000 out of the 16,177, and those will be noticeable to you as you're working in the project. However, as we move on to the export times, we have a great export time for 4K, two minutes and 15 seconds, one of the best export times I've seen on my channel all year. However, as we get into B-RAW, it jumps up to 18 minutes and 48 seconds, when similar laptops scoring a great export time in 4K have scored around the 15 minute to 13 minute mark in 6K B-RAW. So we kind of have a discrepancy here where we're getting good 4K export, but a longer 6K. So just keep that in mind. Now, lastly, DaVinci Resolve has a four minute and one second export time, nine minute 4K clip placed in DaVinci Resolve and exported out at full quality settings. That is on par and looks really good for this laptop. Now, punch for punch, there's definitely a few dynamics about this laptop that I'm not fond of, which would be the small trackpad, the three, four size shift key, non-upgradable RAM, only one upgradable M.2 drive. However, we do have the micro SD card for expansion in your storage. And that has kind of led to, you know, my less than stoked approach to this laptop. If the RAM was upgradable, I would definitely celebrate this thing a lot more. However, this is coming from Acer and it's definitely one of my favorite laptops that are putting out right now. And it gets fantastic scores for what you get with this package. It just leaves you with the inability to expand to more performance by being able to upgrade the RAM. Just let me know what you think in the comment section below, super curious. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you make a purchasing decision. I'll see you in the next one.